Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now whilst the first quad core from Intel was the QX6700 that officially launched under the Core 2 Extreme name. Under the Core 2 quad title it was the Q6600 first on the market. At $850 when new it was expensive but thankfully it can now be picked up for around 15 and I'm still quite fond of it despite its age. The first i3, the 530, launched four years after the quad in January of 2010 for a more sensible price of around $117. This can also be found now for around 15 as well and it features two cores, four threads and a lower TDP. We've reviewed both previously and found that they've still got some life left in them but if you're looking for a cheap CPU for a budget build and have $15, pounds or euros to spend on one of these two CPUs which one should it be? Well let's talk a little bit more about them and then run some tests. On paper the Q6600 is roughly 10% better than the i3 but it's worth remembering the cost of the other components too. Here in the UK you'll find 775 motherboards more commonly and less expensive than 1156 motherboards but that may differ where you live and could ultimately and immediately sway your decision. In the Cinebench R10 test the i3's single threaded performance blew the Q6600 away with 3877 to 2782 but the multi threaded performance gave the Q6600 the edge with 9676 to 9154. Both of these are iconic in the fact that they were both the first of a new generation and comparing them, although largely just for fun, could still be seen as relevant because I feel that these two have aged okay. We're using the GTX 1060 and 8GB of DDR3 for both tests today, with the Core 2 Quad running in the Gigabyte GA, G41MT S2P board and the i3530 running in the DQ57TM board. So let's get into the game. The gameplay you see on screen today is mainly for illustrative purposes and was actually ran from the i3530 system but we will be including both the results from each processor on the screen. So Overwatch first and we tested the game on both CPUs on a variety of different maps and across our one hour gameplay period the Q6600 averaged 37 FPS with 1080p and ultra settings with the i3 getting ever so close but not quite keeping up at 33. The minimum FPS returned a similar story with the Core 2 Quad pulling ahead ever so slightly but both set of results and both CPUs fared quite well. Fallout 4 next again with the ultra settings at 1080p to achieve 48 FPS with the Q6600. Again the i3 is slightly behind with 45 but it was a pretty close result and both of these CPUs yield decent results despite both of them bottlenecking our card. It goes to show though that if you had one of these processors and you were either wanting to upgrade it or you just wanted to pair it with a decent mid-range GPU then you shouldn't worry too much about doing so even though the card wouldn't be hitting its maximum potential. Next up we tried Rise of the Tomb Raider and the i3 actually took the lead here. Once again we had the game set to 1080p with the high settings and the 530 saw 40 FPS on average as opposed to the Q6600 35. It's interesting to note that the Q6600 also demonstrated more stuttering too which is strange because it has 4 physical cores as opposed to 2 and hyper threading but the i3 and 1060 ran the game almost flawlessly. Finally it's Far Cry Primal Ultra with the CPUs almost equally matched both sitting around 42 and 43 frames respectively with the i3 taking a lead once again on this one. Both exhibited some stutter but the overall experience was a pleasant one and both of these are still capable when paired with the right GPU. As I mentioned we used the 1060 to ensure we were getting the maximum out of these two but if you're thinking about building a well balanced budget system something like the GTX 950 would work very well. The winner here? Well it's not entirely clear. The i3 is newer and thanks to hyper threading it still doesn't really struggle with games and the Q6600 will always be the iconic quad and 775 motherboards are likely cheaper to buy and you'll find a lot of old systems online that have a 775 board inside as well. 
This is location dependent though of course, but I would take the i3 personally because it uses less power and doesn't get as hot, which would make it ideal for overclocking. Speaking of which, we managed to hit 3GHz with the Q6600 and the i3-530 can be overclocked to 4GHz on the stock cooler if you're feeling brave enough, but we stopped at 3.3 and even then, it was still a mixed bag of results. So there we have it, two in my opinion iconic CPUs paired against each other, and to be honest the results were quite surprising, and either one of these would make a pretty decent budget CPU for any low cost gaming system. This was a little bit of fun guys, as always, if you enjoyed the video leave a like down below, if you didn't leave a dislike, let me know your thoughts on both of these, if you've had experiences with them as well, and what you think. And and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.